Mmm, <sighs> the appetizing smell of eggs rotting in open sewage. It makes the mouth water. Or maybe it's just the eyes. But in Sweden, that smell means it's time for a local oh. favorite, fermented herring. What is the appeal of this stinky delicacy? And what does it have to do with mesolithic fish bones? Salty sailors? A rebellion? And exploding tins? Stay with us as we brew up all the details. Surströmming is Swedish for sour herring. The dish comes from the high coast region of Sweden and is popular throughout the country. The stroming variety of herring used to make the dish comes from the Baltic Sea. People in the region have been eating fermented herring for thousands of years. In 2016, archaeologists discovered 200,000 fish bones in a Swedish site dated to the early Mesolithic era, 9,200 years ago. Researchers concluded people had put herring in the ground to ferment. The discovery challenged the previous idea of early Scandinavian people being nomadic. Modern surströmming developed in 16th century Sweden. Legend has it that sailors were running low on salt and unable to preserve their food. Their herring started to go bad, so they sold it to locals at a port in Finland. Well, isn't that neighborly? When they returned a year later, the locals said they loved the rotten herring and asked for more. So the sailors began producing more and tried it themselves. But it's more likely that the dish developed because of salt shortages during Gustav Vasa's rebellion. Without salt, the Swedes had to find other ways to preserve their food. Today, the fish is salted and stored in barrels for two months, and fermentation begins. Then the fish is packed into tin cans, where the fermentation continues from six months to a year. When the cans begin to bulge from the buildup of gas, they're ready to eat. But be careful opening the can. The fermentation has pressurized it. Major airlines have banned surströmming and classified it along with dangerous weapons like shoe bombs and firearms. Most Swedes don't believe the cans would explode, but producers of the stinky fish say that a puncture in the can would emit a very foul scent. And that is not something I want to smell on a long flight, thank you very much. This is one reason surströmming is not widely available outside of Sweden. Companies produce 800,000 cans of the fermented herring that are produced every year, and only about 2% is exported. Every summer, Swedes throw parties called surströmingskiva, where they indulge in the herring dish. They hold these parties outdoors to prevent the smell from stinking up houses. If you can get past the smell and bite into it, you'll find that surströmming has a salty, fishy taste. And Swedes often drink a pilsner, schnapps, or a cold glass of milk with it. After opening a can in water and ignoring the putrid smell, debone the fish and cut it into small slivers. Then spread them on a lightly buttered, thin, crispy bread called tonbrot. This can be topped with yellow onion, sliced boiled potatoes called mandelpotatis and gratfil, a fatty fermented milk similar to sour cream. Rotten herring, onion, and fermented milk sounds so tasty. But don't turn your nose up just yet. If you eat Worcestershire sauce or garum, you are enjoying fermented fish sauce. Even ketchup has some fishy roots. You can take a look at its nasty beginnings on another episode of Origins of Food. Yeah.